Hmm. Eddie? Elizabeth? Is that you? Are you upstairs? Betty, I'm coming. Betty? Betty? Are you in there? Open the door! I'm coming in. Stand away from the door. to his wife. Did you notice the handwriting, Betty? He was clearly distraught. Knock, er, knock. Enough is enough. After decades of strife, I pray that God will... Till ye... Forgive me. I am tired of secrets. For 20 years, I've kept my silence about our discovery, but my silence has only led to misfortune, and my cowardice has only led to death. I will make Frederick pay for what he has done to us, for what they have done to our Ruth. When it is over, I will let the ocean take me to you and Ruth. May God forgive me. Anna was already dead when he wrote this. He had no one else to confess to. What now, Betty? Johann went to confront his brother, probably at Frederick's farm. And then? You said this was a gift from another unlucky suitor. It was precious to you. You wouldn't have left it here unless... A signpost. A breadcrumb. You followed Johann to Frederick Fretland's farm, and then to the mine. You wouldn't let this go, Betty. You'd follow your story to the end. All the way to the end.
you follow the tracks to the mine? <clears throat> what led you to this place? All these fragments. You'd piece them together into a story, wouldn't you, Betty? So, what do we know? Johan and Frederick are partners, and on good terms. Something happens in the mine. Disagreements lead to a falling out. And at the end of it all, 20 years later, Johan walks this path to confront Frederick. Is this your doing, Johan? Did you burn your brother's farm to the ground? And where were you, Betty? Did you witness their fall? Simon's grave. Born December 5th, 1909, died September 17th, 1923. The safe. Frederick would choose numbers that meant something to him. Why bury Simon here, and not at the cemetery? If the village blamed him for Ruth's death, your imagination, Betty. You'd figure this out in no time. What do you reckon, Betty? Let's try Simon's birthday. Another Viking artifact, Betty. Most likely from the same treasure Ruth found. Postmarked in Boston. That's a, a curious coincidence. Dear Frederick, I hope this letter, it's in English, Betty. Hope this letter finds you and the boy in good health. We're concerned about you both. Uh, 
No word from you for almost two years now. Hmm. All of us still heartbroken about Margaret's passing. We know things have been difficult for you and Simon. Hmm. Mr. Fretland. We expect you to take care of this problem. If the discovery is made public, the authorities will intervene and the mine will be shut down. Should this happen, we will consider it a breach of our contract and we will withdraw our investment. You and your brother will be responsible for all debts and losses. Johan must be convinced to wall up the chamber. We have already dealt with the worker who made the discovery. Fretland Mining Company. This must be for that locked shed. You went to the mine. I hope our guardian angel watched over you. All right, Betty. So what happens next in your story? Johan and Frederick discover something in the mine. A cave chamber of archaeological value. They argue about what to do. The discovery is made public. It's the end of their enterprise. Johan is convinced or paid to walk away. Their secret stays hidden. Then, a few months later, the accident. Three men die. The investors pull out. The mine shuts down, Frederick's up to his neck in debt. So, 20 years pass. The Frontland feud tears the village apart, setting neighbor against neighbor. And then, Ruth stumbles across the secret in the mine. After all this time, the truth may finally come to light, but she dies. And the day after, Simon is murdered. It's a catalyst. Old grievances resurface. No matter who you stand with, you're a traitor. Things escalate. More people die. From disease, despair, suicides. Murder? Because of the mine, because of what they found there, and what they covered up. There was no one to stop it, Betty. They were alone. That's the real curse of Grovik. Isolation. This place is cursed. Ridiculous. Ruth was here the day she fell. Something spooked her, and then she ran all the way to the cliff where... Do you know what happened, Betty? Did you witness it? Are you in there? Please answer me.
Already? This is... Mother's brooch. You always wore this. You wouldn't take it off unless... You left it here for a reason. What am I not seeing? Elizabeth? Is that... Is that you? Edward? Where are you? I'm on my way, Betty. Wait for me. Edward! Stay where you are! I'm coming! Elizabeth, there you are, finally. <laughs> you have no idea how long I've been looking for you. You, you had me so worried, I, I, I... Look, your brooch, mother's brooch. You, you must have lost it at the mine. Let me put it on for you, Betty. I wouldn't want you to lose it again. <sighs> She's been dead for 30 years, Edward. Elizabeth was never here. But we didn't come for her. We came for Johan, and Anna, and Frederick, and Simon, and... and Ruth. We're here to tell their stories. No. Elizabeth. She's here, I... You know Betty died when she was a baby. She drowned in the pond. And you found her. You were just 11. You carried her 
to your mother. And your mother... She hated you for that. She could never forgive you for bringing her baby to her. And you could never forgive yourself for what she did after. You always forget this. Because you don't want to be alone. So you bring Betty back. Again. And again. To New York. To Boston. To the house. But always just out of reach. Never quite there. The scent of her. The echo of her. But never really her. All it does is make you lonelier. But the thing is, Edward, you're never alone. You have us. And you'll always have us. Betty's... She was never there for you. She couldn't be. You can't lose us. We're a part of you. Forever. And ever. And ever. But you need to let Betty go now. There's not room for all of us in there. I couldn't save you, Elizabeth. I'm so sorry. It is as painful to wake from a vision as it is to be born anew. Bye, Betty. be weaned off the stuff. Boo. Don't lose your taste for tea, old fruit. It keeps you human. We have unfinished business. We do? The final piece of the puzzle. Ruth. Come on. Let's go back to where it started. We have an appointment with a ghost. Such an amazing view, isn't it? And the air. Ugh. Why did we come here, Teddy? To Grovik. Well... Some places have gravity. What are you saying? Gravik's gravity pulled us across the Atlantic Ocean? Grovik. No. I'm not saying that. That's irrational. But you believe it. Don't you? That we were summoned to tell their story. The letter to Frederick. The one you found in his safe. From Boston. I may have overheard a conversation somewhere. Paid it no attention, but the name stuck. And Betty... And I spun a story around it that put us on this path. Do you really believe that? I mean, how often are you around people? To find my sister. But Betty's not. She was never here. It doesn't make sense. I'm a man of science. I don't know what to believe. And yet, here we are. All three of us. Is this what you wanted to show me? I wanted to be close to her. 
Do you believe in ghosts, Edward? You know I don't. Well, you've been chasing one for years. That's different. What about me? Us. You're not ghosts. You're alive. Fair enough. So what really happened to Ruth? I believe it was an accident. How? What happened? Your guess is as good as mine. All right. She ran from the mine and came here. And then... Was she afraid? What made her run? Something spooked her. And she panicked. So she ran here. Why not home? She couldn't go home. Or she didn't want to. She felt safe here. This was her happy place. And then... <sighs> if only Ruth had wings, like an angel, she could have flown straight to heaven. I hope she's at peace. And with God. Do you think that's where everyone's gone? Heaven? They're dead. I don't know what that means. Maybe there is more. I can't stop you from hoping. We'll never know what happened to everyone in Grovik. We tried our best. We'll remember them. All of them. Maybe that will give them some peace in the afterlife. Could this be your book, Edward? The one you've been wanting to write? A story about people who are isolated. Left behind by the world. You can give them all a proper ending. With no annoying loose threads. Edward! Is that- Our boat? But how? Who cares? Let's catch it before it sets out on another adventure! don't understand how this can be. Dragon got tired of sailing around in it and brought it back to us. It must have been the wind. Whatever helps you sleep at night, teddy bear. Let's blouse, while the weather's still good. I need my suitcase. So get a wiggle on, old boy. I'm going to say my goodbyes to all the things. I don't think we'll be back. Meet you at the house! <laughs> my goodness. Ah, <sighs> righty ho. No rush. We have all day. Come on, Teddy. Pack your things. I'll meet you by the boat. Do you never sit still? Don't be a wet blanket. Let's make like the wind and get out of here. Let's go! 
Row, Teddy, row. Water's still cold. It's a fjord, Lissy, and it's almost winter. There'll be snow when we get back to Hanover. The house will be warm. Are we going to be all right, Edward? I think so.